Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Intelligence's uh, Insights uh, Portfolio. And I'm here at, uh, in San Francisco at the, uh, the Biotech Showcase uh, meeting. This is a meeting where you know, biotechs and pharmaceuticals and investors all get together uh, and sort of, you know, look at what's going on in the industry, but also sort of you know, have uh, discussions around transactions and, and potential investments. Um, you know, the biotech industry uh, is you know, one of those that's always in flux, and you know, there's, there's a history of companies where you know, they, they, they start up and you know, have, a, have a bit of a setback, and every now and then have to kind of refresh. So I'm joined by uh, Nick Glover, who's the CEO of a company that is now called Sierra Oncology. That's correct. Used to be called ProNi, yes. but you're, you're going through uh, just a refresh. So um, this was because you, you had a setback. So could you just explain to us you know, the, sort of the, the, the thinking of, of, of what happened uh, at what is now Sierra? Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think you know, principally in this business, two key qualities you need, perseverance and resilience. Yeah. The company had launched and went public with a technology based on oligonucleotides and their ability to influence cancer genes. We took that program through a phase two. It read out, there was efficacy, but unfortunately not efficacy at a level that we thought was sufficiently robust to move towards registration studies. As a consequence, we started thinking about taking the company in a new direction. We scoured the globe, frankly, looking for new assets. We looked at well over 200 assets and eventually alighted on two new assets that we licensed into the company over the last couple of months. Both of these assets are in the area of science called DNA damage response, or DDR. Very delighted to bring both of them in. As a consequence, it seemed the right time to relaunch the company with a new brand, new identity, a new name, and to associate these new exciting assets with a new company. And so Sierra Oncology was born. We just announced uh, the relaunch of Sierra Oncology just this week here at JP Morgan. We announced also that we had successfully transitioned our clinical trials from the UK to the company, and we're off and running as the new firm. Right. So uh, it's kind of interesting. So, so there had obviously been the sort of discussions at the board. It's something like, OK, uh, that hasn't worked. So you, know, you, you still have some resources, you still had some, some finance. Let's, let's put that to work somewhere else. You said you looked at 200 different opportunities that you could have licensed in. Absolutely. So in the first instance, I mean, that seems to be a big troll. What, 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 were the, what, was, what was the kind of qualities or the characteristics of the assets that, that you needed to bring in? And then you could sort of maybe then specifically say about the, the assets that you did bring in, why you, why you why you chose those? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So this is a management team has a lot of experience. First and foremost, we were a team having come together that were determined to stay together and to continue to develop assets. In looking around the world, primarily we were focused obviously in oncology, but on specific criteria. First and foremost, the biology that underpinned the target of interest. It had to be emerging biology. We weren't interested in being incremental. We didn't want to do the same thing everyone else was doing. We didn't want to chase the same targets that everyone else is chasing. We wanted to be on the, on the leading edge of, of cancer biology and, and focus on, on essentially the next generation of therapeutics. And I think we found that in our two new assets, which we can talk about. The next criteria obviously was the quality of the chemical massa. These had to be top notch, top notch chemical assets potent, selective, good chemical properties, drug-like, the potential to be best in class. Best in class against emerging biology to us is the recipe to create significant shareholder value. Those are the criteria. Most things fail to meet the, those, those, uh, those metrics. Ultimately, we found two assets absolutely do pass muster. Emerging biology, very exciting areas of science, great assets, and the opportunity to deploy them, we think, in a very thoughtful way. Do they have attached to them sort of, you know, a sort of proof of concept validation? I mean, how experimental? No, that's a, very, that's a very good question. So this area of science, DNA damage response, is an area of science that really has, has found its time. So the science has been awarded, for instance, recently with the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, the Lasker Award, and we're seeing scientific publications at, a, at, at an increasing rate. 
Industry has moved in significantly. AstraZeneca in particular have made DDR, DNA damage response, cornerstone of their oncology franchise. And the, the prototypic molecules in the space are the PARP inhibitors. So we have an approved agent from Astra. Just recently, another approved agent from Clovis. Tassaro has a, an approvable agent, will be approved this year. The proof of concept is there for assets in the class. And the underlying biology has been proven out by proxy. Now we're looking at what are the next generation targets in this area. And check one is, is a target that's been known for some time. The biology is unequivocal. There's a lot of literature out there demonstrating that this is a very important target. And now we have chemical matter that has the capability of drugging it effectively. So in many ways, we're able to leverage everything that's gone before, but still move in a novel direction with confidence that we're doing the right thing. Right. So, and where did you source those assets from? Was it from the same place or different places? They actually came from different places. We, we have a preclinical asset against a target called CDC7. That came out of Japan. Our lead asset, SRI737, came out of the UK. In fact, it's a Cancer Research UK Institute of Cancer Research developed asset. It was incubated in the UK at the Royal Marsden. We're working with top cancer hospital in the world, as you know. Yeah. Excellent researchers, excellent scientists. This is a group that's been very productive in drug discovery. Abiraterone, Zytiga, multi-billion dollar drug, temozolomide. These guys have an outstanding track record of developing top-notch chemical matter. This is where 737 comes from. It was, it was an easy asset for us to bring in on, on the basis of the quality of, 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 of the discovery and moreover, our continued collaboration with CRUK, with ICR in the UK on the development of the asset. Right. So, so you've got these two assets. What, what, what's the next step for them in their development? Because you said you mentioned that you were transferring. Yeah. So, so one of the one of the appealing facets of bringing in 737 in particular, it had started clinical trials in the UK at the Royal Marsden. These are active clinical programs. One of them is a monotherapy study. The others in combination with standard of care chemotherapy. Both are recruiting patients actively. So it's a chance for us to jump in, take control of these programs, which we just have, and now move forward in an aggressive way, expand the programs, and be more sophisticated in how we develop the assets. And in particular, take advantage of the opportunity to genetically select for patients. As we know, that's the future of oncology, understanding the underlying genetics of these tumors, looking to leverage that this is the path forward for a lot of agents. It's a path forward for 737. So that's really the exciting next step for us, to start focusing on the right patients in the right indications, use genetics to choose those patients, and then hopefully see outstanding responses in those selected patients. So, so, what, so what does the, sort of the clinical timeline look like? Yeah, no, it's a good question. So we're actively in the clinic right now. Our public representation is we'll have preliminary data from both of these trials by the end of this year. So about 12 months from now, that'll be a snapshot. It'll be immature data, but a look-see at where we are, how things are unfolding, and hopefully some early signs of activity. Medical conference data in 2018. But as you know, phase one programs these days are not the old phase one programs. These are concerted efforts to find not just safety tolerability, but early efficacy, and to have the potential to quickly move into registration-oriented trials. So we'll see how the data unfolds, but we've set ourselves up to be as aggressive as possible. So do you have the finance uh, in place to, to be able to actually sort of you know, execute the, this, this program? No, it's a, good, it's a good question. We actually have a very healthy cash position. We have well over $100 million on the balance sheet right now. Our publicly stated cash runway is well over 18 months. We have more than enough runway to take us through data onto the next steps of the development. So cash is not an issue. So we've got capital, assets, fantastic team, great science. The future's very bright for Sierra Oncology and obviously we have to be out there telling the new story. And uh, you know, in a case, I mean, I come to a lot of these conferences and I, and I hear about this, the need for uh, patient investors, right? investors who are prepared to you know, sort of kind of ride, ride that, that sort of storm. Are those the kind of investors that, that, you've, that, that you feel you've got? I mean, you're, presumably you're here to you know, tell the story about you know, how you reshape the business, but you must be getting some feedback about you know, what you've actually done. Yeah, no, I think, I, think, I think it's a very good question. Look, at, in this business, you do need patient investors. Moreover, the heart of biotech 
are sophisticated investors, folks who understand the science and how that science can be translated. Those are the kind of investors we have in the company that we're hoping to continue to attract into this new story. I will see that DDR, genetic selection, and the kind of programs we're running resonate exceedingly well because it's the future of oncology. And so I think we're very well positioned. So as we move forward, hopefully we'll continue to strengthen our balance sheet, we'll continue to, uh, to attract more investors over the long term, but for the near term, we're well set. Great. Well, well Nick, thanks very much for coming and sharing the story with us. Oh, very much. Thanks. Very, greatly appreciate it. Thanks.